Warning, this video contains an extremely intense amount of science and bad puns. Proceed with caution. Well, it's time to wreak some havoc on this guy. I bet no one ever beats him in laser tag. He can give himself his own laser eye surgery. Okay, I'm sorry. But I was trying to find some good havoc puns, but I couldn't. It's like I got this hole inside my chest, or... Never mind. I'm sorry you had to hear that. Okay, if you're still here and your ears didn't bleed out, I'd like to tell you about this incredible hero. His main capability is absorbing cosmic radiation and dispersing the energy into an electromagnetic beam that changes the gas particles in the air into plasma. Now I can see a lot of things wrong with this statement. The first one that I'm going to talk about is his eco-friendly quality of photosynthesis. He absorbs energy from the air, then stores it, then disperses it into a supercharged magnetic wave. The biggest difference between his process and what your marigolds do, besides the plasma beams, is what he is absorbing. He is taking in all kinds of radiation that is not good for you. Since he does not simply redirect it, but stores it, there will be many drawbacks to his power. Radiation poisoning is the biggest one. The types of rays that Havoc takes in are among many, gamma and radio. These are some of the largest causes of cancer known to man. It is never officially said that he can reduce the amount of radiation damage done to him to protect him from these effects, so we can't assume that he has them. Man, first Wolverine, now Havoc. What X-Man doesn't have cancer? The next main issue with his plasma beams is the pure heat generated from them. The plasma beams alone, without factoring the amount of heat it takes to generate them, are equal to about 580,000 degrees Fahrenheit or about 320,000 degrees Celsius. The element with the highest melting point is carbon, which has a melting point of 3,550 degrees Celsius or 6,420 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that Havoc is generating almost 100-fold the heat required to melt these elements. You would think that whenever he uses his powers, everything would turn into a puddle, but everything around him would simply turn into gas. But this is not the hottest temperature released from his energy beam. In order for his electromagnetic waves to turn the hydrogen atoms in the air into plasma, he would have to reach temperatures hot enough to go through nuclear fusion. To do this, it takes roughly 100 million Kelvin. This means that he would be releasing temperatures about six times hotter than the core of the sun. To put this into perspective, the hottest natural thing on Earth is lightning which is roughly 285 degrees Kelvin. This is about 351,000 times cooler than Havoc's plasma rays. This will be powerful enough to melt almost the entire planet because of the secondary effect that I will talk about in a minute, so we can just put a pin in this. These temperatures are not nearly as powerful as some of the other intense heat we've seen on this show like Flash, but it's still way too improbable for any of this to happen. But hey, I guess that's what we're here for. So yet another reason why Havoc cannot possibly be even an eligible mutant is because he has to control these plasma beams with electromagnetic waves. Because electromagnetic waves get weaker the further they go from the source, Havoc would have to make the starting point of his beam more powerful than the end. This would result in even greater levels of heat. Remember that pin I was talking about? Time to pull it back out. Because an electromagnetic wave does not go in a perfectly straight line, the laser would actually swell up in an elliptical shape that spreads out in both directions. And because the energy created at the center will be much hotter than the energy that, if you remember, has the power to almost melt the entire Earth, nothing on this planet could survive such a devastatingly hot point. While it might be small, well, it is shown that Havoc can hold this plasma beam for up to a minute. Everything on this Earth would die, and if the heat itself didn't incinerate us all, the amount of damage done to the ozone layer would. He would easily rupture almost completely through our atmosphere, subjecting us to horrible radiation damaging and drastic climate change. In a sense, we would all just die. While this might seem like we've nitpicked Havoc enough as it is, there's more. This amount of heat would also incinerate Havoc, obviously, because while he is resistant to these types of energy beams, he is not immune. And what we have established is that he cannot physically take in any fraction of this energy without dying. So how does he withstand these blasts himself? Well, this may just sound like the comics didn't even take this into account, and I assure you, they didn't. Havoc actually can come out of this situation alive, but barely. Their reason being is called plasma windows, not to be confused with plasma shields. These things are capable to channel plasma through electromagnetic waves so it doesn't have too many negative effects. Havoc cannot possibly use this to cover the entire beam because it would not reach out that far, but if Havoc used the disc on his chest to control the plasma energy around him, he could channel the majority of the heat away from him so that he would not only deal plasma to them, he would not deal nearly as much damage to himself. This would probably be still too much for a normal human to can take. But since Havoc does have some resistance to it, he would only come out with minor 3rd to 4th degree burns. Time for the ending, right? I mean, what else can you talk about a guy who simply shoots lasers from his chest? 
Well, there is, somehow, still more, but I'll make it brief. Because his electromagnetic waves are electromagnetic, he can actually still have a pretty powerful mutant power without roasting the rest of the population. These waves have the power to manipulate magneticable metals like Magneto, but in a much less focused and destructive way. He can make his own magnet waves stronger than anything the Magnet Man himself could do. As I said, he would not be as focused as Magneto's, but his power would outweigh and he could just easily pull any or all metals to him. If he makes his magnetic rays too powerful, the metals will just smash into him and crush his entire body like a car compressor. So he needs to be careful. So while I thought it would be hard to talk about a man who just simply just shoot laser beam from his chest, this actually turned out to be one of my favorite ones to research and learn about. So remember, whether he's single-handedly causing global warming or taking himself to the scrapyard, this guy still can't go anywhere without wearing his pajamas or a yellow spandex. That's it for this episode. Remember to like this video and comment on what hero you'd like to see perform in the real world next. We're the Superhero Scientist, signing off.